Define suffrage. Suffrage is the right to vote in the election of officers chosen by the people and in the determination of questions submitted to the people. It includes within its scope, election, plebiscite, initiative, and referendum. Defined election. Election is the means by which the people choose their officials for a definite and fixed period and to whom they entrust for the time being the exercise of the powers of government. What are the kinds of elections? There are two kinds of elections, regular or general, one provided by law for election of officers either nationwide or in certain subdivisions thereof, after the expiration of the full term of the former members, special, one held to fill a vacancy before the expiration of the term for which the incumbent was elected. Define automated election system. It is a system using appropriate technology which has been demonstrated in the voting, counting, consolidating, and transmission of election results and other electoral processes. RA 9369, otherwise known as the Election Automation Law, Section 2, Paragraph 1. Qualification and Disqualification of Voters What are the qualifications of voters? To exercise the right of suffrage, a person must be card, citizenship, a Filipino citizen, age, at least 18 years of age, residence, a resident of the Philippines for at least one year, a resident of the place where he proposes to vote for at least six months and not otherwise disqualified by law. Constitution, Article 5, Section 1. When should a voter possess the age and residency requirements? The age and residency requirements must be complied with on the day of the election, and a person who on the day of the registration may not have reached the required age or period of residence, but who on the day of the election shall possess such qualifications, may register as a voter, otherwise known as the Voters Registration Act, Section 9, R.A. 8189. For election law purposes, is residence synonymous with domicile? Yes. In election cases, the court treats domicile and residence as synonymous terms, both import not only an intention to reside in a fixed place but also personal presence in that place, coupled with conduit indicative of such intention. Domicile denotes a fixed permanent residence to which, when absent for business or pleasure, or for like reasons, one intends to return. Pundau Daya v. Kamalik, 2009. May the Congress enact a law which provides for additional qualifications for voters to it? A. Must be able to read and write. B. Must be an owner of a residential house of the place where he proposed to vote. No. No literacy, property, or other substantive requirement shall be imposed on the exercise of suffrage. Who are those persons disqualified from registering as voters? Under the Omnibus Election Code, BB881, the following are disqualified to register as voters. Idni. Those convicted by final judgment to suffer imprisonment for not less than one year, unless pardoned or granted amnesty, but their rights are automatically reacquired upon expiration of five years of their service of sentence. Those are judged by final judgment as having committed any crime involving disloyalty to government or any crime against national security, but their rights are reacquired upon expiration of five years after service of sentence, and three, insane or incompetent persons as declared by competent authority, BP 881, Section 118. Registration and Deactivation of Voters What is a voter's registration? Voter's registration is the act of accomplishing and filing a sworn application for the registration by a qualified voter before the election officer of the city or municipality wherein he resides and including the same in the book of registered voters upon approval by the election registration board, RA 8189. Registration does not confer the right to vote, but it is a condition precedent to the exercise of the right. Registration is a regulation, not a qualification. Ira versus Abano. 
What is the system of continuing registration under RA 8189? The personal filing of application of registration of voters shall be conducted daily in the office of the election officer during regular office hours. No registration shall, however, be conducted during the period starting 120 days before a regular election and 90 days before a special election. RA 8189, Section 8. How may an application for registration be challenged? The right to register may be challenged through the following process. OOH 1. Any voter, candidate, or representative of a registered political party may challenge in writing any application for registration stating the grounds therefore. The challenge shall be under oath and be attached to the application together with a proof of notice of hearing to the challenger and the applicant. 2. Oppositions to contest a registrant's application for inclusion in the voters list must in all cases be filed not later than the second Monday of the month in which the same is scheduled to be heard or processed by the Election Registration Board. Should the second Monday of the month fall on an unworking holiday, oppositions may be filed on the next following working day. And 3. The hearing on the challenge shall be heard on the third Monday of the month, and the decision shall be rendered before the end of the month. RA 8189, Section 18. What is the activation of registration? Deactivation is the process of deactivating the registration of certain persons, removing their registration records from the corresponding precinct book of voters, and placing the same in the inactive file after entering the cause or causes of deactivation. Properly marked, deactivated, and dated in indelible ink, RA8189, Section 27. In what instances may a person's registration be deactivated? 1. Any person who has been sentenced for final judgment to suffer imprisonment for not less than one year, such disability not having been removed by plenary pardon or amnesty. Note, the right to vote may be automatically reacquired upon expiration of five years after service of sentence as certified by the clerk of court. Number 2. Any person who has been adjudged by final judgment by a competent court or tribunal for having cost or committed any crime involving disloyal to the duly constituted government such as rebellion, sedition, violation of the anti-subversion, and firearms laws, or any crime against national security unless restored to his full civil and political rights in accordance with law. Note, the right to vote may be regained automatically upon expiration of five years upon service of sentence. 3. Any person declared by competent authority to be insane or incompetent unless such disqualification has been subsequently removed by a declaration of a proper authority that such person is no longer insane or incompetent. 4. Any person who did not vote in the two successive preceding regular elections as shown by their voting records. For this purpose, regular elections do not include the Sangunian Kabataan, SK elections. 5. Any person whose registration has been ordered, excluded by the court, and 6. Any person who has lost his Filipino citizenship, RA 8189, Section 27. How can a registration be reactivated? Any voter whose registration has been deactivated may file with the election officer a sworn application for reactivation of his registration in the form of an affidavit stating that the grounds for the deactivation no longer exist at any time but not later than 120 days before a regular election and 90 days before a special election. Section 28 of 8189 Is the statutory requirement of biometric validation imposed under RA 10367? constitute an unconstitutional substantial requirement in the exercise of the right of suffrage? No. The biometrics validation as a requirement is not a qualification to the exercise of the right of suffrage, but a mere aspect of the registration procedure of which the state has the right to reasonably regulate. Registration regulates the exercise of the right of suffrage.
It is not a qualification for such right. Kabataan Party List v. Comelec. December 16, 19, 2015 rather. Inclusion and Exclusion Proceeding. What are the common rules governing judicial proceedings for the inclusion, exclusion, and correction of names of voters? The following procedure shall be followed. 1. Petition for inclusion, exclusion, or correction of names or voters shall be filed during office hours. 2. Notice of the place, date, and time of the hearing of the petition shall be served upon the members of the board and the challenged voter upon filing of the petition. 3. A petition shall refer only to one precinct and shall implead the board as respondents. 4. No cost shall be assessed against any party in these proceedings. However, if the court should find that the application has been filed solely to harass the adverse party and cause him to incur expenses, it shall order the culpable party to pay the cost and incidental expenses. 5. Any voter, candidate, or political party who may be affected by the proceedings may intervene and present his evidence. 6. The decision shall be based on the evidence presented and in no case rendered upon a stipulation of facts. If the question is whether or not the voter is real or fictitious, his non-appearance on the day set for hearing shall be prima facie evidence that the challenged voter is fictitious. And 7. The petition shall be heard and decided within 10 days from the date of its filing. Cases appealed to the RTC shall be decided within 10 days from receipt of the appeal. In all cases, the court shall decide these petitions not later than 15 days before the election and the decision shall become final and executory. Section 32, R.A. 8189. Distinguish inclusion proceedings from exclusion proceedings. Petition for inclusion as to prayer. Any person whose application for registration has been disapproved by the board or whose name has been stricken out from the list may file with the court a petition to include his name in the permanent list of voters in his precinct. As to venue, Municipal Trial Court and Metropolitan Trial Court shall have original and exclusive jurisdiction. As to time of filing, any time except 105 days prior to a regular election or 75 days prior to a special election. As to required accompanying documents, 1. Certificate of disapproval of his application. Number 2. Proof of service of notice of his petition upon the board, as to period for Comelec to decide within 15 days after its filing. As to appeal, decisions of MTC and METC may be appealed by the aggrieved party to the RTC within five days from receipt of notice thereof. Otherwise, the decision shall become final and executory. RTC shall decide within 10 days from the time it is received and the decision shall become final and executory. No motion for reconsideration shall be entertained. In RA 9189 as amended, petition for inclusion within 10 days from receipt of notice denying the motion for reconsideration, the applicant may file a petition for inclusion with the proper municipal or metropolitan trial court in the city of Manila or where the overseas voter resides in the Philippines at the option of the petitioner. The petition shall be decided on the basis of the documents submitted within 15 days from filing but not later than 120 days before the start of the overseas voting period. Should the court fail to render a decision within the pre prescribed period, the RERB ruling shall be considered affirmed. Petition for exclusion as to prayer. Any registered voter representative of a political party of the election officer may file with the court a sworn petition for the exclusion of a voter from the permanent list of voters giving the name, address, and the precinct of the challenged voter. As to venue, municipal trial court and metropolitan trial court shall have original and exclusive jurisdiction. As to time of filing, any time except 100 days prior to a regular election or 65 days before a special election. 
as to required accompanying documents, proof of notice to the board, and to the challenged voter. As to period for COMLEC to decide, within 10 days from its filing. As to appeal, decisions of MTC and METC may be appealed by the aggrieved party to the RTC within five days from receipt of notice thereof. Otherwise, said decision shall become final and executory. RTC shall decide within 10 days from the time it is received, and the decision shall become final and executory. No motion for reconsideration shall be entertained. In RA 9189 as amended, petition for exclusion, if the application has been approved, any interested party may file a petition for exclusion not later than 180 days before the start of the overseas voting period with the proper municipal and metropolitan trial court in the city of Manila or where the overseas voter resides in the Philippines at the option of the petitioner. The petition shall be decided on the basis of the document submitted within 15 days from its filing, but not later than 120 days before the start of the overseas voting period. Should the court fail to render the decision within this prescribed period, the ruling of the RE, RB shall be considered affirmed. Section 9 of 9189. May the trial court declare a voter as a resident of another municipality in exclusion proceedings? No, it is not within the competence of the trial court in exclusion proceedings to declare the challenged voter as a resident of another municipality. The jurisdiction of the trial court is limited only to determining the right of the voter to remain in the list of voters or to declare that the challenged voter is not qualified to vote in the precinct in which he is registered, specifying the ground for the voter's disqualification. Domino versus Kamalek. What is an overseas voting? It is the process by which qualified citizens of the Philippines abroad exercise their right to vote, otherwise known as the Overseas Voting Act of 2013. What is the coverage of RA 10590? All citizens of the Philippines abroad who are not otherwise disqualified by law, at least 18 years of age, on the day of elections, may vote for president, vice president, senators, and party list representatives, as well as in all national referenda and plebiscites. Who are disqualified from overseas absentee voting? The following shall be disqualified from voting under this act. Those who have lost their Filipino citizenship in accordance with Philippine laws. Number two, those who have expressly renounced their Philippine citizenship and who have pledged allegiance to a foreign country except those who have required or retained their Philippine citizenship under RA 9225, otherwise known as the Citizenship Retention and Reacquisition Act of 2003. Number three, those who have committed and are convicted in a final judgment by a Philippine court or tribunal of an offense punishable by imprisonment of not less than one year, such disability not having been removed by plenary pardon or amnesty, provided, however, that any person disqualified to vote under this subsection shall automatically acquire the right to vote upon the expiration of five years after service of sentence. Number four, any citizen of the Philippines abroad previously declared insane or incompetent by a competent authority in the Philippines or abroad, as verified by the Philippine embassies, consulates, or foreign service establishments concerned, unless such competent authority subsequently certifies that such person is no longer insane or incompetent. Section 59189. What are the requirements for registration as an overseas voter? 1. Valid Philippine Passport. In the absence of a valid passport, a certification of the DFA that it has reviewed the appropriate documents submitted by the applicant and has found them sufficient to warrant the issuance of a passport, or that the applicant is a holder of a valid passport but is unable to produce the same for a valid reason, 2. Accomplished registration form prescribed by the Commission, and 3. Applicants who avail themselves of the Citizens Retention and Reacquisition Act 9225 shall present the original or certified true copy of the order of approval of their application to retain 
or reacquire their Filipino citizenship issued by the post or their identification certificate issued by the Bureau of Immigration, the Commission may also require additional data to facilitate registration and recording, no information other than those necessary to establish the identity and qualification of the applicant shall be required. All applications for registration and or certification of an overseas voter shall be considered as applicants to vote overseas. An overseas voter is presumed to be abroad until she or he applies for transfer of her or his registration records or request that his or her name be cancelled from the National Registry of Overseas Voters. How may the registration of an overseas voter be deactivated? The Resident Election Registration Board, or ERB, shall deactivate and remove the registration records of the following persons from the corresponding book of voters and place the same, properly marked and dated in the inactive file after entering any of the following causes of deactivation. 1. Any person who has been sentenced by final judgment by a Philippine court or tribunal to suffer imprisonment for not less than one year, such disability not having been removed by plenary pardon or amnesty, provided, however, that any person disqualified to vote under this paragraph shall automatically reacquire the right to vote upon the expiration of five years after service of sentence, as certified by the clerks of court of the municipal, municipal circuit, Munis metropolitan, regional tri courts, or the syndicambayan. 2. Any person declared by competent authority to be insane or incompetent unless such disqualification has been subsequently removed by a declaration of a proper authority that such person is no longer insane or incompetent. 3. Any person who did not vote in two consecutive national elections as shown by voting records. and 4. Any person whose registration has been ordered excluded by the courts. 9189 as amended section 13. How may the reactivation of the registration of an overseas work voter previously deactivated be made? Any overseas voter whose registration has been deactivated pursuant to the preceding section may file with the RERB at any time, but not later than 120 days before the start of the overseas voting period. As one application for reactivation or registration stating that the grounds for the deactivation no longer exist. How to cancel the registration of an overseas voter? The RERB shall cancel the registration records of those who have died as certified by either the posts or by the local civil registrar and those who have been proven to have lost their Filipino citizenship. What is the manner of voting of an overseas voter? Voting may be done either personally or mail or by any other means as may be determined by the Commission on Elections. For this purpose, the Commission shall issue the necessary guidelines on the manner and procedures of voting. The Office for Overseas Voting, OFOV, in consultation with the Department of Foreign Affairs Overseas Voting Secretariat, DFAOVS, shall determine the countries where voting shall be done by any specific mode, taking into consideration the minimum criteria enumerated under this Act, which shall include the number of registered voters, accessibility of the posts, efficiency of the host country, applied system, and such other circumstances that may affect the conduct of voting. The Commission shall announce the specific mode of voting per country or post at least 120 days before the start of the voting period. Is the absentee voting available only to overseas Filipino citizens? No, the Commission on Elections shall extend the right to vote under the local absentee voting system provided under existing laws and the executive orders to members of media, media practitioners, including the technical and support staff who are duly registered voters and who on election day may not be able to vote due to the performance of their functions in covering and reporting on the elections provided that they shall be allowed to vote only for the positions of president, vice president, senator, and party list representatives.
who may avail of detainee voting. Detainee voting, either through the special polling place inside jails or escorted voting, may be availed by any registered detainee whose registration record is not transferred or deactivated or canceled or de deleted, who are considered detainee for purposes of detainee voting refers to any person 1. confined in jail formally charged for any crimes and awaiting or undergoing trial number 2. serving a sentence of imprisonment for less than one year or 3. whose conviction of a crime involving disloyalty to the duly constituted government such as rebellion, sedition, violation of firearms laws or any crime against national security or for any other crime is on appeal. What is a special polling place? Special polling place shall be established in detention centers, jails, with at least 50 registered detainee voters. Comic Resolution 9371 Who are escorted? Detainee voters. The following shall avail of the escorted voting. 1. Detainee voters who are residents or registered voters of municipalities, cities other than the town, or city of detention and two detainee voters in detention centers or jails where no special polling place are established provided that said detainee voters obtain courts orders allowing them to vote in the polling place where they are registered two that it is logistically feasible on the part of the jail or prison administration to escort the detainee voter to the polling place where he is registered and three that reasonable measures shall be undertaken by the jail or prison administration to secure the safety of detainee voters, prevent their escape, and ensure public safety. Comelec Resolution Number 9371 Who is considered a candidate? A candidate is any person aspiring for or seeking an elective public office who has filed a certificate of candidacy by himself or through an accredited political party, a groupment, or coalition of parties, BP 881, Section 79, Paragraph A. A person who files certificate of candidacy within the period of filing shall only be considered as a candidate at the start of the campaign period for which he filed his certificate of candidacy. Pinera v. Kamalek. What qualifications should a candidate for president and vice president have? The following are the qualifications. Natural born citizen, at least 40 years old, on the date of the election, able to read and write, res registered voter, and resident of the Philippines for at least 10 years, immediately preceding the day of the election. Constitution Article 7, Sections 2 and 3. What qualifications should a candidate for senators have? 1. Natural born citizen at least 35 years old on the day of the election, able to read and write, registered voter, and resident of the Philippines for not less than two years immediately preceding the day of the election. What qualifications should a candidate for district representatives have? 1. Natural born citizen, at least 25 years old on the day of the election, able to read and write, registered voter in the district in which he shall be elected, resident of the same district for a period of not less than one year immediately preceding the day of the election. What qualifications should be met to be a candidate for governor, vice governor, mayor, vice mayor, Punong Barangay, and Sanguinong member? Citizen of the Philippines. Number two. On election day, age must be at least B, 21 years, for governor, vice governor, member of the Sanguinong Panlalawigan, mayor, vice mayor, or member of the Sanguinong Panlalawigan or highly urbanized cities. 21 years for mayor or vice mayor, or independent component cities, component cities, or municipalities, or C, 18 years for member of the Sangguniang Panlungsod, or Bayan, or Punong Barangay, or member of the Sangguniang Barangay, 18, but not more than 24 years old, Sangguniang Kabataan, otherwise known as the Sangguniang Kabataan Reform Act of 2015. Number three, able to read and write Filipino, or any other local language or dialect, registered voter in the barangay, municipality, or city, 
or province, or in the case of a member of the Sangguniang Panlalawigan, Panglunsod, or Bayan, the district where he intends to be elected, resident there in at least one year immediately preceding the election. What are the disqualifications applicable to all candidates under Section 12 of the Omnibus Election Code? The disqualifications to be a candidate and to hold any office are the following. 1. Declared as incompetent or insane by competent authority. Number 2. Convicted by final judgment for subversion, insurrection, rebellion, or any offense for which has been sentenced to a penalty of more than 18 months imprisonment before the expiration of a period of five years from his service of sentence and three, convicted by final judgment for a crime involving moral turpitude. Note, these disqualifications shall be deemed removed upon the declaration by a competent authority that said insanity or incompetence had been removed or after the expiration of a period of five years from his service of sentence. Provide the disqualifications for local elective positions under the local government code. The following persons are disqualified from running for any elective local position. 1. Those sentenced by final judgment for an offense involving moral turpitude or for an offense punishable by one year or more imprisonment within two years after serving sentence. Number 2. Those removed from office as a result of an administrative case, number three, those convicted by final judgment for violating the oath of allegiance to the Republic, number four, those with dual citizenship. Five, fugitives from justice in criminal or non-political cases here or abroad. Number six, permanent residents in a foreign country or those who have acquired the right to reside abroad and continue to avail the same right after the effectivity of this code in seven, the insane or feeble-minded. What are other grounds for disqualification under the election code? After having filed a certificate of candidacy, the following shall be disqualified from continuing as candidate or if he has been elected from holding the office. Number one, one who has given money or other material consideration to influence, introduce, or corrupt the voter or public officials performing electoral functions. Number two, one who committed acts of terrorism to enhance his candidacy. Number three, one who spent in his election campaign an amount in excess of that allowed by the code. Number four, one who has solicited, received, or made contributions prohibited under Section 89, Transportation, Food and Drinks, Section 95, Public or Private Financial Institutions, Public Utilities, or Exploitation of Natural Resources, Contractors of Public Works, or other government contracts, franchise holders, or concessionaires, educational institutions receiving grants from the government, official of the civil service of the or the EFP, foreigners or foreign corporations, Section 96, foreign source contributions, Section 97, raising of funds through lotteries, cockfights, boxing bouts, bingo, beauty contests, and Section 104, Prohibited contributions to churches, school buildings, roads, bridges, medical clinics, etc. Number five, one who has violated the provisions of Section 80, campaign period, Section 83, removal, destruction of law, election, propaganda, Section 85, prohibited forms of propaganda, Section 86, regulation of propaganda through mass media, and Section 261, election offenses. Number six, one who is a permanent resident or immigrant to a foreign country unless said person has waived his status as permanent resident or immigrant of a foreign country in accordance with the residence requirement provided for in the election laws. Is premature campaigning prohibited? No, the Congress has laid down the law. A candidate is liable for election offenses only upon the start of the campaign period. This court has no power to ignore the clear and express mandate of the law that any person who files his certificate of candidacy within the filing period shall only be considered a candidate at the start of the campaign period for which he filed his certificate of candidacy. Neither can this court turn a blind eye to the express and clear language of the law that any unlawful act or omission applicable to a candidate shall take effect 
only upon the start of the campaign period, Pinier versus Commission on Elections. Section 15 of Republic Act 8436 is amended by Republic Act 9369, or otherwise known as the Election Automation Law, provides a new definition of the term candidate, as a result of which premature campaigning may no longer be committed. Discuss the anti-dynasty provision on the RA-10742. An official of the Sangguniang Kabataan, either elective or appointive, must not be related within the second civil decree of consanguinity or affinity to any incumbent elected national official or to any incumbent elected regional, provincial, city, municipal, or barangay official in the locality where he or she seeks to be elected. RA 10742. Are dual citizens allowed to run for public office? No. Under Section 4, letter D of the Local Government Code, a person with dual citizenship is disqualified from running for any elective local position. For national positions, although he meets the qualification of being a Filipino citizen, he does not meet the qualification that he is only a Filipino citizen. Mercado v. Manzano, May 26, 1999. What steps must dual citizens take to become eligible to seek public office? To become eligible to seek public office, a dual citizen must 1. Meet the qualifications for holding such public office as required by the Constitution and existing laws, and 2. Make a personal and sworn renunciation of any and all foreign citizenships before any public officer authorized to administer an oath prior to or at the time of the filing of their certificate of candidacy. RA 9225 Section 5 Number 2 Note, it has been held that the affidavit of renunciation shall be deemed withdrawn when the person performs acts which unequivocally repudiate his prior renunciation such as the use of his foreign passport even after executing said affidavit. Arnado versus Commission on Election, August 18, 2015. What steps must a natural-born Filipino citizen who has lost his Philippine citizenship by reason of his naturalization as a citizen of a foreign country take to become eligible to seek public office? To become eligible as a candidate for public office, such a person must, one, meet the qualification for holding such public office as required by the Constitution and existing laws, and two, Reacquire his natural born citizenship by taking the oath of allegiance found in Section 3 of RA 9225. 3. Make a personal and sworn renunciation of any and all foreign citizenship before any public officer authorized to administer an oath prior to or at the time of filing of their certificate of candidacy. Jepson v. Kamalek. Note, it has been held that failure to comply with any of the formal requisites prescribed in RA 9225, such as the execution of a sworn renunciation of foreign citizen, is fatal to the candidacy of a foreign or dual citizen seeking public office. It is immaterial that the foreign country of whom he was citizen no longer treats him as their citizen. It is the compliance with Philippine law that governs a person's citizenship with respect to the Philippine state. Jobson v. Kamlik. Are foundlings natural-born citizen? Yes. As a matter of law, foundlings are, as a class, natural-born citizens. While the 1935 Constitution's enumeration is silent as to foundlings, there is no restrictive language which would definitely exclude foundlings either. The deliberations of the 1934 Constitution Convention show that the framers intended foundlings to be covered by the enumeration. Moreover, treaties and international law conventions, which are generally accepted principles of international law, supports the presumption of natural-born citizens of foundlings. Poe, Lamanzares v. Comelec. What is the effect of disqualification resulting from the cancellation of the certificate of candidacy? Any candidate who has been declared by final judgment to be disqualified under Section 69 or 78 shall not be voted for and the votes cast for him shall not be counted. If for any reason a candidate is not declared by final judgment before an election to be disqualified and he is voted for and receives the winning number of votes in such election, the court or commission shall continue with the trial and hearing of the action, inquiry or protest 
and upon motion of the complainant or any intervenor may during the pendency thereof order the suspension of the proclamation of such candidate whenever the evidence of his guilt is strong. What is the second placer rule? The electorate's awareness of the candidate's disqualification is not a prerequisite for the disqualification to attach to the candidate. The very existence of a disqualifying circumstance makes the candidate ineligible. Knowledge by the electorate of a candidate's disqualification is not necessary before a qualified candidate who plays second to a disqualified one can be proclaimed as the winner. The second placer in the vote count is actually the first placer among the qualified candidate. McKeeling versus Kamele. Filing of Certificates of Candidacy. What is the deadline for filing of Certificate of Candidacy? The deadline for the filing of Certificate of Candidacy or Petition for Registration to participate in the election shall not be later than 120 days before the elections, provided that any elective official, whether national or local, running for any office other than the one which he or she is holding in a permanent capacity except for president and vice president shall be deemed resigned only upon the start of the campaign period corresponding to the position for which he or she is running. RA 8436 Section 11 What is a certificate of candidacy? It is a statement of a person seeking to run for a public office certifying that he announces his candidacy for the office mentioned and that he is eligible for the office, the name of the political party to which he belongs to, if any, and his postal address for all election purposes. Sinaka versus Mula. What is the effect of filing a certificate of candidacy by a person in public office? Depending on the position the candidate is currently occupying, the filing of a certificate of candidacy would have the following effects. Appointive officials, any person holding a public appointive office or position including active members of the armed forces of the Philippines and other officers and employees in government owned and controlled corporations shall be considered ipso facto resigned from his office upon the filing of his certificate of candidacy. Elective officials, any person holding an elective office or position shall not be considered resigned upon the filing of his certificate of candidacy for the same or any other elective office or position. Comelic Resolution 8678. In fine, an elected official may run for another position without forfeiting his seat. Quinto versus Comelic. What is the effect of filing two certificates of candidacy for different offices? The person shall not be eligible for either office. However, before the expiration of the period for the filing of certificates of candidacy, the person who has filed more than one certificate of candidacy may declare on their oath the office for which he desires to be eligible and cancel the certificate of candidacy for the other office or offices. A person who has f filed a certificate of candidacy may, prior to the election, withdraw the same. The filing of a withdrawal of certificate of candidacy shall not affect whatever civil, criminal, or administrative liabilities a candidate may have incurred. Comelic Resolution 8678, Section 1. What is the effect of formal defects in the certificate of candidacy? While the certificate of candidacy is required to be under oath, the election of a candidate cannot be annulled on the sole ground of formal defects in the certificate such as lack of the required oath, the Guzman v. Board of Canvassers. Nowhere in Section 40 of the LGC will one find that a defective certificate of candidacy is a ground for disqualifying a candidate. Neither does it specify that a defective notarization is a ground for disqualification of a candidate. Sergio Amora v. Kamalek. Substitution and Withdrawal of Candidates in what instances may a candidate be substituted, and by whom? If after the last day of the filing of certificates of candidacy, an official candidate of a registered political party dies, withdraws, or is disqualified for any cause, he may be substituted by a candidate belonging to and nominated by the same political party. No substitute shall be allowed for any independent candidate. No person who has withdrawn his candidacy for a position shall be eligible 
a substitute candidate for any other position after the deadline for filing of certificates of candidacy. What is the effect of withdrawing a certificate of candidacy? The withdrawal of the certificate of candidacy shall affect the disqualification of the candidate to be elected for the position. The withdrawal of the withdrawal for the purpose of reviving the certificate of candidacy must be made within the period provided by law for the filing of certificates of candidacy. The filing or withdrawal of a certificate of candidacy shall not affect whatever civil, criminal, or administrative liabilities which a candidate may have incurred. Until when can the substitute file his certificate of candidacy? What is the same surname policy? The substitute of a candidate who was withdrawn may file his certificate of candidacy at least 150 days before election day. No substitution due to withdrawal shall be allowed thereafter. The substitute for a candidate who dies or is disqualified by final judgment may file a certificate of candidacy up to the midday of election day, provided that the substitute and the substituted have the same surnames. If the death of disqualification should occur between the day before the election and midday of election day, the substitute candidate may file a COC with any board of election inspectors, election officers, provincial election supervisor, or regional election director as the case may be. In the political subdivision where such person is a candidate or in the case of a candidate for president, vice president or senator with the law department provided that the substitute and the substituted candidate have the same surnames. Comelec Resolution 9984 Section 19. What are the requisites for a valid substitution? The requisites for a valid substitution are the following. There is a valid certificate of candidacy, Balaga versus Kamalek. Number two, the original candidate has died, withdrawn, or has been disqualified for any cause, BP 881, Section 77. Three, there is a valid withdrawal of the COC after the last day of the filing of the certificate of candidacies. Number four, the substitute belongs to and is certified by the same political party. Number five, the substitute filed his COC not later than midday of election day, Serafika versus Kamalek. Number six, the substitute himself qualifies for the position. Who are nuisance candidates? Nuisance candidates are those whose certificates of candidacy are presented and filed to put the election process in mockery or disrepute or to cause confusion among the voters by the similarity of the names of the registered candidates or by other circumstances or acts which clearly demonstrate that the candidate has no bona fide intention to run for the office for which the COC has been filed and thus prevent a fateful determination of the true will of the electorate. BP 881 Bautista versus Kamalek November 13, 1998. What is the period for filing a petition against a nuisance candidate? The petition to declare a duly registered candidate as a nuisance candidate shall be filed personally or through a duly authorized representative with a commission by any registered candidate within five days from the last day for the filing of certificates of candidacy. What is the nature of the petition against nuisance candidate? A petition to cancel or deny due course to a COC on the ground that he is a nuisance candidate under Section 69, as in Section 78, cannot be treated in the same manner as a petition to disqualify under Section 68, has the legal effect of such cancellation of a COC of a nuisance candidate cannot be equated with a candidate disqualified on grounds provided in the Omnibus Election Code and Local Government Code, De La Cruz versus Comelec. November 13, 2012. Is a candidate accused of being a nuisance candidate entitled to notice and hearing? Yes. The COMLEC would commit grave abuse of discretion if it denies to course to or cancels a certificate of candidacy without affording the candidate an opportunity to be heard. The COMLEC should also balance its duty to ensure that the electoral process is clean, honest, orderly, and peaceful with the right of a candidate to explain his or her bona fide intention to run for public office 
before he or she is declared a nuisance candidate. Timbal versus Kamalek. What is the effect of disqualification as a nuisance candidate on votes cast for the nuisance candidate? The votes cast for a nuisance candidate declared as such in a final judgment shall be considered stray votes. However, where such nuisance candidate, so declared by final judgment as such, has the same surname as that of a legitimate candidate, votes cast for the nuisance candidate are not stray, but must be counted in favor of the latter. De La Cruz versus Kamalek. Note, the exception does not apply if there are two or more bona fide candidates with the same name and or surname as the nuisance candidate. Thus, the votes cast for the nuisance candidate shall also be considered as stray votes. Does the Comelec have discretion to refuse certificates of candidacy? No. When a candidate files his COC, the Comelec has only ministerial duty to receive and acknowledge his receipt. BP 881, Section 76, Luna v. Comelec. The receiving officer shall have the ministerial duty to receive and acknowledge receipt of the Certificates of Candidacy or Nomination by registered political parties or coalition of political parties on or before the deadline for filing of Certificates of Candidacy, provided said certificates are under oath and contain all the required data and in the form prescribed by the Commission. In what instances may the Comelec go beyond the face of the Certificate of Candidacy? The Comelec may go beyond the face of the COC in cases of 1. Nuisance candidates 2. Petitions to deny due course or to cancel a COC under Section 78 of BP 881 and 3. Disqualification cases based on any of the grounds in BP 881 Section 68. Remedies and jurisdiction In what instances may the Comelec deny due course to or cancel certificate of candidacy? The Comelec upon proper petition may deny due course to or cancel the certificate of candidacy on the ground that any material representation contained therein as required under Section 74 of the OEC is false, provided that the false representation pertains to material matter affecting the substantive rights of a candidate and two, the false representation must consist of deliberate attempt to mislead, misinform, or hide a fact which would otherwise render a candidate ineligible, Salcedo II can versus Kamalek. In addition, the Kamalek may motu propio or upon verified petition refuse to give due course to or cancel certificate of candidacy if shown that it was filed. 1. To put the election process in mockery or disrepute. To cause confusion among voters by similarity of names of registered candidates or 3. By other circumstances or acts which demonstrate that a candidate has no bona fide intention to run for the office for which his certificate of candidacy has been filed, and thus prevent a faithful determination of the true will of the electorate. When may a petition to deny or cancel a certificate of candidacy be filed? The petition may be filed by any person within five days from the last day of filing of certificate of candidacy, but not later than 25 days, from the filing of the Certificate of Candidacy subject of the petition. In case of a substitute candidate, the petition must be filed within five days from the time the substitute candidate filed his Certificate of Candidacy. Now, jurisdiction over a petition to cancel a Certificate of Candidacy lies with the Comelec sitting in division, not with the Comelec and Bank. Garvita versus Salis. What are the requirements in order for a petition to deny or cancel a certificate of candidacy to prosper. For a petition to deny, due course, or cancel the COC of one candidate to prosper, the defendant must have made a material misrepresentation involving his eligibility or qualification for the office to which he seeks election, such as the requisite residency, age, citizenship, or any other legal qualification necessary to run for elective position. Moreover, the false representation under Section 78 of the OEC must consist of a deliberate attempt to mislead, misinform, or hide a fact which would otherwise render a candidate ineligible. Bill of Freder versus Comelec, February 25, 2014. 
Note, the comma cannot itself, in the same cancellation case, decide the qualification or lack thereof of the candidate. The tribunals which have jurisdiction over the question of the qualifications of the president, the vice president, senators, and the members of the House of Representatives was made clear by the Constitution. Po. Lomanzaris versus Kamalek. Supra. Who may be disqualified from the elections? Any candidate who, in an action or protest in which he is a party, is declared by final decision of a competent court guilty of or found by the commission to be suffering from any disqualification provided by law or the Constitution. Who may file a petition for disqualification? Any registered voter or any duly registered political party, organization or coalition or both political parties may file a verified petition to disqualify a candidate. Distinguish a petition to disqualify a candidate from a petition for cancellation of a certificate of candidacy. A petition to disqualify a candidate and a petition for cancellation of a certificate of candidacy may be distinguished in this manner as to basis. For petition to disqualify a candidate based on prohibited acts committed by a candidate, BP 881, Section 68. Under petition for cancellation of a certificate of candidacy based on material misrepresentations in the COC or in allegations of nuisance candidacy, BP 881, Section 69 or 78. As to the period of filing the action, to disqualify a candidate may be filed not later than the date of proclamation, BP 881, Section 68. For cancellation of a certificate of candidacy, action under Section 69 must be filed within five days from the last day for the filing of certificates of candidacy or if substitute from the date of substitution. Action under Section 78 must be filed within 25 days from the filing of the COC. Petition to disqualify a candidate as to effect when granted, the candidate is disqualified from running from office and shall not be voted for if he is not disqualified before the elections and he obtains the highest number of votes, his proclamation shall be suspended. Upon disqualification, the vacancy shall be filled by operation of the laws on succession. Petition for cancellation of a certificate of candidacy as to effect when granted. The person who filed the COC shall be deemed to have never been a candidate. Any votes he shall receive shall be considered stray votes and shall be null and void except for nuisance candidates who have the same or similar sounding name to a bona fide candidate. Second placer rule applies. Gonzalez v. Kamalek. In what instances may a failure of election be declared? Failure of elections may be declared in the following cases. 1. The election in any polling place has not been held on the date fixed on account of force majeure, violence, terrorism, fraud, or other analogous causes. 2. The election in any polling place had been suspended before the hour fixed by law for the closing of the voting on account of force majeure, violence, terrorism, fraud, or other analogous cases. And three, after the voting and during the preparation and transmission of the election, returns, or in the custody of canvas thereof, such election results in a failure to elect on account of force majeure, violence, terrorism, fraud, or other analogous causes. Mutilan versus Comlec. What are the requisites before a failure of election may be declared? The following requisites must concur. No voting took place in the precinct or precincts on the date or hour fixed by law, or even if there was voting, the election resulted in a failure to elect. Number two, the vote not cast would have affected the result of the election. And three, the cause of such failure of election should have been force majeure, violence, terrorism, fraud, or other analogous causes. Section 6 of BP 881. Who has the power to declare a failure of election? The Comelec and Bank has the original and exclusive jurisdiction to hear and decide petitions for declaration of failure of election or for annulment of election results. Is there an instance where the House of Representative Electoral Tribunal 
may annul elections result? Yes. The HRET, as the sole judge of all contests relating to the election, returns, and qualifications of members of the House of Representatives, may annul election results if in its determination fraud, terrorism, or other electoral irregularities existed to warrant the annulment, because in doing so, it is merely exercising its constitutional duty to ascertain who among the candidates received the majority of the valid votes cast, Abayan versus HRET. Note, the power of the HRET to annul elections differ from the power granted to the Comelec to declare failure of elections. The Constitution, no less, grants the HRET with exclusive jurisdiction to decide all election contests involving the members of the House of Representatives which necessarily include those which raise the issue of fraud, terrorism, or other irregularities committed before, during, or after the elections. To deprive the HRE the prerogative to annul elections would undermine its constitutional fiat to decide election contest. Abayon versus HRET. Who shall decide on a petition to declare failure of elections and call for special elections? It is the Comelec sitting in bank by a majority vote of its members. The causes for the declaration of a failure of election may occur before or after the casting of votes or on the day of the election. When shall a special election for president or vice president be held? In case a vacancy occurs for the office of the president and vice president, the Batasang Pambansa shall at 10 o'clock in the morning of the third day after the vacancy occurs convene in accordance with its rules without need of a call, and within seven days enact a law calling for a special election to elect a president, a vice president to be held not earlier than 45 days, nor later than 60 days from the time of such call. When shall a special election be held in case of vacancy in the House of Representatives or Senate? In case a permanent vacancy shall occur in the Senate or House of Representatives at least one year before the expiration of the term, the Commission shall call and hold a special election to fill the vacancy not earlier than 60 days, nor longer than 90 days after the occurrence of the vacancy. However, in case of such vacancy in the Senate, the special election shall be held simultaneously with the succeeding regular election. What is a pre-proclamation controversy? A pre-proclamation controversy refers to any question pertaining to or affecting the proceedings of the Board of Canvassers, which may be raised by any candidate or by any registered political party or coalition of political parties or by any accredited and participating party list group before the Board or directly with the Commission. Comelec Resolution No. 8804, Rule 3, Section 1, as amended by Comelec Resolution 9164. What issues may be raised in a pre-proclamation controversy? A pre-proclamation controversy covers only two issues. Illegal composition of the Board of Canvassers, BOC, which exists when, among other similar circumstances, any of the members do not possess legal qualifications and appointments. The information technology capable person required to assist the BOC by RA 9369 shall be included as among those whose lack of qualifications may be questioned. Comelec Resolution No. 8804, Rule 4, Section 1. Number 2. Illegal proceedings of the BOC which exist when the canvassing is a sham or mere ceremony, the results of which are predetermined and manipulated as when any of the following circumstances are present. A. Precipitate canvassing. B. Terrorism. C. Lack of sufficient notice to the members of the BOC. Or D. Improper venue. Comelec Resolution 8804. Rule 4, Section 2. Who has jurisdiction over pre-proclamation controversies? The Comelec has exclusive jurisdiction over all pre-proclamation controversies arising from national, regional, or local elections. It may motu propio or upon written petition and after due notice and hearing, order the partial or total suspension of the proclamation of any candidate elect or annul partially or totally any proclamation, if one has been made, as the evidence shall warrant. What are the requisites for an election protest? According to Rule 6 of Comelec Resolution 8804, an election protest must be filed 
by any candidate who has filed a certificate of candidacy and has been voted for in the same office and who received the second or third highest number of votes or in a multi-slap position was among the next four candidates following the last ranked winner duly proclaimed. Number two, on the grounds of fraud, terrorism, irregularities or illegal acts committed before, during or after the casting and counting of votes. Co-waranto. What are the requisites for a petition for co-waranto relating to elections? The requisites for a petition for co-waranto relating to elections are the following. 1. It must be filed by any registered voter in the constituency. Number 2. Based on the grounds of ineligibility or disloyalty to the public. And 3. It must be filed within 10 days from the proclamation of the election results. Distinguish an election protest from a petition for co-waranto. Election protests as to nature. It is strictly a contest between the defeated and winning candidates based on grounds of election fraud or irregularities as to who actually obtained a majority of the legal votes and therefore is entitled to hold the office. Co-waranto as to nature. It refers to questions of disloyalty or ineligibility of the winning candidate. It is a proceeding to unseat the ineligible person from office, but not to install the protestant in his place. Election protests as to who may file. It can only be filed by a candidate who has duly filed a certificate of candidacy and has been voted for the same position. Co-waranto as to who may file. It can be filed by any voter. It is for this reason that it is not considered a contest where the parties strive for supremacy. Election protests as to effect to the protestee. A protestee may be ousted and the protestant seated in the office vacated. Co-waranto as to effect to the protestee. While the respondent may be unseated, the petitioner will not be seated. What is the effect of filing an election protest or a petition for co-waranto? The filing of an election protest or a petition for co-waranto precludes the subsequent filing of a pre proclamation controversy or a petition to annul proclamation. It also amounts to the abandonment of one filed earlier, thus depriving the Comelec of the authority to inquire into and pass upon the title of the protestee or the validity of his proclamation. The reason is that once the competent tribunal has acquired jurisdiction over an election protest or a petition for co-waranto, all questions relative thereto will have to be decided in the case itself and not in another proceeding, William Moore v. Kamalek. In what instances may a pre-proclamation controversy still proceed, despite the proclamation of the winning candidate or the filing of an election protest or petition for co-waranto? A pre-proclamation controversy may still proceed if 1. What is filed is not really a co-waranto or election protest but a petition to annul a proclamation. Number 2. Co-waranto is not the proper remedy. Number 3. The BOC is improperly constituted. Number 4. The filing of a co-waranto or an election protest is expressly made without prejudice to pre-proclamation contest or is made ad cotelum. Or 5. The proclamation is null and void. Dumayas, Jr. v. Kamalek. Provide the rules and jurisdiction over election protests, co waranto and related remedies. The following is the summary of rules and jurisdiction over election offenses. Proceedings. Election. Elective barangay official. Election protests. co waranto METC, Municipal Trial Courts in Cities, MTC, MCTC. Appeal, certiorari mandamus prohibition, Comelec. Certiorari from Comelec decision, Supreme Court. Elective municipal officials, election protests or co waranto RTC. Appeal, certiorari mandamus or prohibition, Comelec. Certiorari from Comelec decision, Supreme Court. Elective regional, provincial, city officials, election protests or co waranto Comelec. Certiorari, Supreme Court. Members of the House of Representatives, election protests or co waranto HRET, Certiorari, Supreme Court. Members of the Senate, Election Protest or co waranto SET, Certiorari, Supreme Court. President and Vice President, Election Contest, co waranto Supreme Court, Presidential Electoral Tribunal.
Discuss when the jurisdiction of the electoral tribunals begin and the complex jurisdiction ends. In the case of House of Representative Electoral Tribunal, once a winning candidate has been proclaimed, taken his oath, and assumed office as a member of the House of Representatives, the COMELEX jurisdiction over election contests relating to his election returns and qualifications ends, and the HRET's own jurisdiction begins. Stated in another manner, where the candidate has already been proclaimed winner in the congressional elections, the remedy of the petitioner is to file an electoral protest with the HRET. Vincent's chat over says Kamalek.